Okay, today we're going to finish our play structure. We're going to add some more things to it. So I want you to open up the play structure pillars. Pillars and platform. And what we're going to do is go save as. And we're going to save this as play structure complete. It's base structure complete. Okay, we're going to start by adding a wall to the edge. And we're going to do this by beginning with the tape measure tool. So the tape measure tool is over here on the left. You can also type the letter E and that snaps to the tape measure. We're going to go to the edge and kind of pull into the center. Um, and we're going to type one inch and enter. And that gives me a guideline one inch in from the edge. We're going to do that again and go three inches in from the edge. So in again, three inches, enter. And that's exactly three inches. What we're going to do is kind of zoom onto the top here. And we're going to use the rectangle tool, which is keyboard shortcut R. And we're going to draw a rectangle across this intersection of our guideline. Okay, now we're gonna use the push-pull tool, which is keyboard shortcut P. And I'm gonna click on this, this rectangle here and kind of draw it up. And I want you guys to type in 24 inches and hit. This is gonna create kind of a little wall um, for the kids to not fall out of this. We're also going to zoom in on the edge of this wall right here, and we're going to go back to the rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw a rectangle from the bottom end point in here over to the, this edge over here. Okay, and you'll see in the bottom right, we get dimensions that are three feet, four inches by one and 11 sixteenths. I want to change that to three feet, four inches, comma, by two inches, hit enter. It's going to give me an exact dimension of a two inch rectangle in the bottom. Go back to the push pull tool and kind of rotate around to the front a little bit. And I'm going to push this through until we get that kind of, do you see how there's that kind of like transparent looking and it says on face. When I click this, it's going to completely cut it out. It means it shoved the rectangle and through until it was exactly level with the back face. And this is going to allow us to cut pieces out so we can actually see through them. Now what we're gonna do is zoom out, kind of move this down, and we're going to select the two point arc tool right here. Um, two point arc tool, we wanna to make sure that we get that edge on the inside. You're gonna go kind of high on the left side, a little bit lower on the right side, and then kind of um, gradually pull in here until you get an arc that you kind of like. So I kind of like that arc right there. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my push pull tool, keyboard shortcut P. I'm gonna shove this out, which is gonna kind of cut it away until it says on edge, and then I'm gonna cut it and it just completely shears that section out. So this is kind of looking more like a child's play structure. I'm gonna type keyboard shortcut C, just going to give me the circle tool and I'm going to draw just an assortment of circles to kind of make it look like <clears throat> kids play structures. So maybe like four or five varying sizes, big, small, doesn't matter. Something like that. Okay. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is use the push pull tool again keyboard shortcut P. I'm going to push these through the back wall again until I get that on face notification. This is going to cut some holes in here, just like you see in normal kids play structures. There we go. So let me make it look a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to rotate around a little bit. And then we're going to go use the select, which is spacebar. We're going to triple click on the shape we've created. 
and I'm going to select right click and select make group because I only want one of these. Now we're going to take care of this side of our model and we're going to put some bars so that the kids don't slide out this direction. What I'm going to do is use the circle tool again. So I type C. Um, actually at this point I'm going to type I'm going to kind of reference it down here, find the midpoint, and then I'm going to rise up from the midpoint. You see how it draws a line there, so it gives me a reference point. Um, I'm going to click on the edge, make sure I get that, and then I'm going to kind of draw out. Um, and I want a one inch diameter circle. I'm going to type the push pull tool, select that circle and draw out, and I'm going to reference it against the edge on that pillar, and then I'm going to click to complete it. So it has gone all the way across and kind of creates this bar. Now I'm going to go back to the select tool, just spacebar, and then triple, triple click on this bar, and then right click. We're going to make this a component because I want to duplicate it. So I go component, and we're going to name this bar. Hit enter and create something that I can duplicate. Now what I'm going to do is use the move tool and we're going to create an array. So we type M and I grab this guy and kind of draw up in the blue, uh, blue direction. So you can see how it says on blue axis. I don't click that again, but I hit control and it leaves me a copy. So I'm going to draw up until it's kind of like looks to my eye to be how, how far apart bars are supposed to be spaced. I'm going to um, click and leave a copy there. And then we're going to do something called an array. I'm going to type in the lower section, I'm going to type three, and then I'm going to hit enter. And that's going to create three copies off my original one that are evenly spaced apart. This is an incredible tool um, for creating things that are evenly spaced. One more time on that. Let's say that you messed up. We hit Control Z. I'm no, just kidding. So again, we've already created a component here. So we click on this guy with the Move tool, kind of draw up. It's going to give me that on blue axis. I want to type Control. It leaves a copy. If you wanted it evenly spaced, we could do it four inches, we could type that in if you wanted. It would snap to four inches. And let's say I want to put four bars on there. Immediately I can type four X and hit enter and it will give me four evenly spaced copies off of the first original one. Okay, so now we want to create some stairs so the kids can walk off of this. So it's kind of high. What we're going to do is Use the rectangle tool again, so that's R. We're going to find the midpoint on this edge. Should snap to it. Turn blue. Where are you? There we go. Midpoint. Um, I'm, I'm going to create a rectangle along this edge to that endpoint. I'm going to use the push-pull tool and pull this guy out to four feet, not four inches. <laughs> okay, uh, let's try that again. Four feet. Yes, okay. hit enter. Much better. Okay. All right, I'm gonna swing underneath this, still with the push-pull tool selected, and I'm gonna pull this bottom edge out and reference it to the bottom of our play structure. So that's gonna go basically all the way down to the ground. All right. Bring that up. Nope. There we go. Okay. So at this point, use my selection tool, zip in. We're going to um, create some more guidelines. So stairs are normally one foot out and eight inches down. Let's 
kind of standard stair, comfortable stair dimensions. So I'm going to use the tape measure tool again. So we go T and I'm going to draw out and create a line out here that's 12 inches. Enter and then I'm going to create another uh, line that on the edge and then kind of pull down that's going to be eight inches down. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to use the line tool and draw a line from the intersection on the edge here using the blue um, axis and then down to the line. And I create that line there. Okay, at this point, uh, I'm gonna select out of that. We have a bunch of guidelines that we don't need anymore. So in order to get rid of guidelines, you can do it with the erase tool or we can turn all of them off at once. So the erase tool, you can tap E and you can erase each of the guidelines um, one by one, or you can go over here to the display and um, there's a section that says delete all guides and when I tap that all of the guidelines disappear which is kind of nice so a little shortcut there all right so we're gonna select this is the outline of our stairs here so we're gonna select this line here and I'm gonna hold down shift and select this line Ooh, nope select that line there so the two of them are highlighted in blue um, I want to move these, so I'm going to go to M. I'm going to move this. I'm going to start at this endpoint. I'm going to pull down, and you're going to see it's going to warp the geometry, which we don't want. So I'm going to put it back, and then I'm going to type Control one time, just tap it, and now I can move the entire thing. So I'm just going to go to the end. Okay, I'm going to zoom out, kind of come down here. Still selected. I click on this edge. Tap Control one time and bring a copy of this down and drop it at the endpoint. Do it again. Um, see if I am going to tap Control again okay. on that end, Control, and then I'm going to drop another copy down here. So now I have the outline of the stairs on the edge. I'm going to select the Push Pull tool again, which is C. Select this plane and shove that whole thing back until this edge turns clear. And then that will cut the stairs away. I'm going to use my, my two-point arc again and kind of cut away on the bottom of these stairs so they look more like a play structure. So I select the two-point arc again, kind of click, click up here on the edge, maybe like right at the base of the stairs, um, base of the top stair. And then I'm going to go down here to this and I'm going to kind of create a curve that looks nice. And then use the push-pull tool again to shove this bottom section out of the way. Let go ahead and push that out until it kind of cuts it out like that. At this point, I want to make sure to keep hitting save so that I will be saving these things and I'm less likely to lose them. You want to triple click on your stairs using the select tool. and make it a group. All right, next thing we're gonna build is gonna be a slide off of this edge over here. So we're gonna use the rectangle tool, type R. This one we're just gonna eyeball. We're gonna put it on the edge here, and kind of draw it across like that. We use the push-pull tool, and we're gonna pull the shape out six feet, enter. I'm going to swing underneath the shape and pull this whole shape down, referencing it with the bottom of the play structure. And then we click. This is going to create, and then I can actually create the slide out of. So to create the slide, I'm going to use the two point arc again. Okay, we're going to click the bottom endpoint here with the bottom of the slide, that intersection right there. And I'm going to draw it out to kind of create that curve that are in slides like that. I'm going to select this with the select tool, making sure I don't want the top one, I want the actual line. There we go. I'm going to go to the move tool, which is M. I want to click this bottom 
endpoint right there. So I click on that guy. We're going to type control. It's going to create a copy. And I'm going to drag a copy up that bottom endpoint of the top of the slide. At this point, I'm going to go back to my select tool. And I'm going to hit push pull, selecting the top. And I'm going to shove that out, cutting it away. Shove the bottom out, cutting that part away. Ooh, there we have a slide. Very nice. I'm going to triple click on this piece. Okay, right click and hit make group. Last thing you guys are going to do is you're going to change the colors of this. So I'm going to kind of scroll out like this so I can see the whole model. Maybe move it more center into view. And I'm going to go over here to the right to the materials panel and I'm going to open that up and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click this guy over here that says browse and we're just going to change colors right now. I'm not going to get carried away with materials. Um, we're just going to use the basic palettes. So I want to select colors and let's say I'm going to select this tool right here, which is the paint bucket right there. And I can choose any color I want. So maybe I want like a red for the roof, change the pillars to the same color. You guys can do whatever you want here. Since they're all components, the entire thing is going to be changed, which is why we do that. Um, maybe I want the stairs to be a dark green. You guys can do whatever you want here. Um, we'll make these kind of yellow. I'm just playing around here. Um, do whatever suits your fancy. Maybe I'll change that back there. So we have this real ridiculous looking play structure, but um, you know, it's bright and uh, I think would, you know, cheer kids up. Um, I'm going to put that whole thing back. I'm going to close that panel. I'm going to go over here to this, um, to my display. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go shadows. Currently it's shadows off. I'm going to change to shadows on. Um, this is going to give me, I don't know why this says offset limited to right here. Sorry about that. Um, this is going to give me shadows that I can adjust depending on the time of day. Um, you can just make them look how you want them to look earlier in the day, later in the day, whatever. Um, and just play with this, um, make it look cool. And I'm going to hide this again. And there we go. There's a completed play structure. So I want you to put a snip of this in your assignment and we're done with this project. Thank you guys so much.